How can it be so small yet deliver such big games? It's the Nintendo Switch from Nintendo. What's the best handheld game system since the Nintendo Game Boy? Say it along with me. It's the Sega Nomad, which plays Sega Genesis games on the go. What's the best handheld game system since the Sega Nomad? Why, that would be the Nintendo Switch, which is basically a handheld game system, roughly the same size as the Sega Game Gear. It does have a much better screen. It's also thinner. I like the Nintendo Switch. I'm actually quite impressed with this thing. When Nintendo has a good idea, they have a good idea, and they executed it well in this case. It's nothing more complicated than an iPad with joysticks and a stand that conveniently allows you to plug it into a TV. That's all it is. And that's all the iPad ever needed to make it a really good game system. This thing is basically a tablet with two little, what do they call them, Joy-Cons? Joy joystick controllers, you snap to the side of it and you can snap, you can slide them out and put them onto a little joystick accessory making like a gamepad. It's, it's great. It's brilliant. This is the best idea that Nintendo has had since putting a handle on the GameCube. You gotta admire the handle on the GameCube. It's so simple, but Magnavox used that same principle when designing the Magnavox Odyssey 2 game cartridges. I mean, instead of just like grabbing them with your whole hand and possibly losing them, you can literally pick them up by the handle and wear them on your belt. And you can do the same thing with the GameCube. So I wish that Nintendo would have put a handle on the Switch, but... Well, they didn't. And, that, and that, that's a shame, and I'm disappointed. So there's nothing new in this. Handheld game systems, for years now, have had various cables and accessories allowing you to play them on, on TV, like the uh, PlayStation TV, not, well, sort of, not exactly. The PS Vita had a cable. No, let me restate that. The PSP had a cable. Actually, it worked pretty well. The Vita has Earth Defense Force. It has EDF. But the Switch makes it really easy. And it's just, it's very well designed. It's very clever, it's very smooth and streamlined. The Wii U I thought was kind of a cumbersome, complicated mess. Especially if you wanted to play Wii games, because you, you had to have that stupid sensor bar plugged in. It sucked and the controller ran out of batteries in like 20 minutes. So you had to have that constantly plugged into your Wii U. This, this is much nicer than the Wii U. Uh, doesn't play game discs. <laughs> That's so 1990s. This plays games on little cards, kind of like the PS Vita cards, but uh, somewhat bigger. It actually, it actually reminds me of the Vita in a way, just the styling of it a bit. The screen is bigger. It's a much bigger game system. I'd actually like to see Sony come out with something like this for their PlayStation. Uh, this, this, this does work better than remote play, even though remote play isn't too bad, but let's get to the, uh, the quick review here as I'm taking some photos for an upcoming project, capturing this thing from every angle. I thought it would be fun just to talk about it while rolling this footage. Hey, here's the touch screen. It has a touch screen like everything else does. So you can use the touch screen, you can use the controllers, and games are best played with controllers and thumbsticks and buttons. So I love that they've, they've added that to the side of this and you can slide, it's just so clever. And one Switch will allow you to play two-player games of, of Mario Kart 8. Because you can slide those little controller things off the side and then use them independently as their own controllers. But if you want to play a three-player game, I went out and bought that Switch Pro controller for like $1,000, <laughs> $70. A bit overpriced if you ask me, but it's got some nice accessories. Well, not the most exciting game system in the world, visually, from the style standpoint. I do find it fun to photograph. It's just one of these things which is, for some reason, it's hard to explain, it's hard to put a finger on it, it's fun to photograph, from every angle. And I think that's because it's clever. Ooh, here's a shot of me switching lenses. Hold on to something, it's exciting, I know. Going from uh, a wide angle shot there to some macro, there we go. See, that's the thing where you plug your Switch into that, and then you plug that thing into your TV, and then you play big games, like Zelda. And the Zelda game's awesome, by the way. I'm not, and I'm not just saying that because it's the thing to say. It really is pretty awesome. Like Far Cry, except not at all. Far Cry 4. 
This it just reminds me of that capturing those towers over. Like I did the same thing in Far Cry Four. I was immediately distracted from the plot just to go and capture everything, kill everything on the map, and of course blow up animals with explosives. Doing the same thing in Zelda without the explosives. I'm just running around exploring everything and capturing everything. Here we here we go. Here's the games. Nice. Uh, it doesn't have a huge game lineup yet, but it's Nintendo, so obviously it's got Nintendo games and. You know, when you really get down to it, those are worth their weight in gold because Nintendo has most of the best IPs in the industry, including new ones like Splatoon, which is just terrific. Mario Kart, what they do, they just re-released Mario Kart and it's awesome. So, uh, pretty clever work by Nintendo and of course there's a lot of new stuff uh, coming out over the next, well, probably forever. Nintendo's been around for more than 100 years, so I doubt they're going anywhere. And uh, I'm not jumping on the choo-choo Nintendo train exclusively here because you know I'm always on the Sega Vectrex train, but I am impressed with the Switch. I think at the moment it's very interesting. It's far more exciting to talk about the Switch than VR because VR is, I think, like this, this, this very personal experience where you get locked into this thing and like the only way to really experience VR is by yourself. Yeah, you know, it's just not that much fun to talk about. The Switch is something you can play. You can play with your friends. You can play with everyone. You don't you know technicalities? Yeah, you can hook up all your VR stuff together and play multiplayer, or whatever. But like, this is a traditional, old school game system. Sony and Nintendo are like the last two companies making traditional old school game systems. Microsoft, to some degree, but I like. I like actually, I think it's smart how they're incorporating the Xbox into like all their other stuff in their infrastructure. But Sony and Nintendo will always have badass physical hardware, and I'm really pretty psyched about the Switch. So hopefully you've enjoyed my rambling. Go play some Vectrex. As always, thank you for watching. Classic Game Room is on Patreon. Classic Game Room Barware is at ClassicGameRoom.com. And my books, Surf Panda, Jesus the Coked Up Chicken Number 2, and Retro Megatrex are on Amazon.com. Welcome to the Patreon Lord Carnage Club being shouted from a turbo volcano! Michael and Ariana Nelson, Ian Shore, Stephen Chucknick, Al Stever, Rick DeBarros, Jason Goy, Andy Schleiss, Sergio Matthias Hergert, Philip Straubenmuller, Jack Stavris, Ohad Kane, Simon Allen, and Sean Zoltek.